What is the definition of hope? What is the first hope of the Christian? What are some reasons why the return of Christ gives us hope? We're going to talk about these questions and more in today's confirmation video, so stick around. Welcome back, Confirmands. Good to have you with us as we continue our walk through the Apostles' Creed. As always, be sure to have with you your Bible, your small catechism, something to write with, and something to write on. Now, in the last few videos, we've been studying the third article of the Apostles' Creed. It's all about the Holy Spirit and who He is and what He does. He calls, gathers, enlightens, and sanctifies the whole Christian church on earth and keeps it with Jesus Christ in the one true faith. And in this Christian church, he daily and richly forgives all my sins. Now in this video, and in the next, we'll talk about another work of the Holy Spirit, that he gives us hope and life. But before we start, let's remember that we are baptized and beloved children of God, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. All right, so let's begin by talking about exactly what hope is. Now, if you look up that word in a dictionary, you'll find something like an expectation or desire for a certain thing to happen. Now, the key word there is expectation. We are expecting something to happen. It's different than a wish in that when you wish for something, you think, gosh, it'd be really nice for something to happen, but I don't expect it to. But when we hope for something, we expect it to happen. So as Christians then, what is our hope? Why do we have this hope? You know, in a world that is full of all kind of bad stuff, pollution and crime and war and disease and hate and natural disasters, it's hard to have hope sometimes. In our look at the first article of the Apostles' Creed, we ask the question, why does an all-loving, all-caring God allow such pain, evil, and suffering? And do you remember our honest answer to that question? Well, we don't always know. However, we do remember and we do know a few things. First, our own sinful choices cause suffering for us and for the world. And eventually, as if you go back to question 222, we remember that our choices bring about death. Because of our sin, we will die. We also know that another cause of our suffering and death is because of creation itself. It's cursed and tainted with our sin and our sinful choices. So that's what we know. But still, what is our hope as Christians? Sometimes people will say, well, our hope is that we'll go to heaven when we die. Or, or maybe that our hope is that we'll have eternal life. We're going to talk more about those statements in our next video. But for this video... I want to talk about a more important hope that we have. It's the first of our hopes, and it's this, that Christ will return. Now, why does that, or why should that, give us hope? Take a look at question 228 in your catechism. What will happen on the last day? The catechism gives us nine reasons. So, are you ready to take notes? Because we're going to go through all nine. Let's do it. First, Christ will visibly appear with his angels. We'll get to see him face to face. That's a pretty awesome hope. How cool will that be? Now, the second reason. All the kingdoms of the world will give way to Christ's kingdom. Remember, we talked about this, that earthly kings and earthly powers, they rule with fear and power, whereas Christ rules in humility and love and service. Reason number three. The dead will be raised and the bodies of all believers will be glorified. And we're going to talk more about that in the next video. But for now, just remember the words of St. Paul. He says, In just a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, the last trumpet, for at that trumpet will sound and all the dead will be raised imperishable and we shall all be changed. But we'll talk about that more next time. The fourth reason, Christ is going to come to judge all people. And as he does, all evil will be purged away from his kingdom, and only what is good and pure will remain. Fifth reason why this gives us hope. Satan will be defeated and banished from God's presence forever. Number six. 
God will renew the heavens and the earth. Everything will we'll make way for the way it was supposed to be from the very beginning. Do you remember way back in Genesis chapter 1, what did God say about creation? That's very good. Number seven, we will be reunited with all those who have died in the faith. We'll get to see all our fellow believers once again. Eight, there will be a great feast with unending joy. If you want a great description of this, check out Isaiah chapter 25, verses 6 to 9. And the last reason is we're going to be able to see God and dwell with him forever. I mean, he dwells with us now, but it'll be even a closer relationship than ever. All of that is tied up in that first hope that we have that Christ will return again. Now, in our next video, we're going to talk about the second hope that we have as Christians, that our resurrection in our life to come comes through Christ too. But we're going to talk about next time. But let's close with a blessing for now. May the Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless us now and forever. Amen.